the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Christ is in our midst. So, looking about uh, today's gospel, uh, I came across uh, a couple of things. Um, and it came from St. Gregory the Dialogues, who was the Pope of Rome at the time. And, and he writes that the, gar or the wedding garment can symbolize the virtue of charity. Especially in this time that we're living, we need charity. Uh, charity begins at home um, with our family, then to our friends, uh, to our church community, and then to the rest of the world. Um, and we prepare ourselves to meet the King and God by developing within us our, ourselves this virtue of charity. Because at the end, it's, a, it's, at the, it's the highest development of all the spiritual virtues that come down from this, according to St. Gregory. The aim towards this, those who are saved, are those who acquire selfless love, and that's charity. The selfless love that we have for our family, the selfless love that we have for each other, for the uh, for St. Peter's community, for the Archdiocese, for the world, it's the selfless love. A love that does not aim at selfish ends. St. Gregory says, referring again to the wedding garment, that the cloth is woven between two beams, an upper and a lower. And if you've ever seen anyone ever uh, use a... Uh, uh, anytime someone uses uh, to, what's it called? The wool cl uh, cloth. You have an upper and you have a lower. The upper beam, which is God's love, and the lower beam, which is our love for our neighbor. Once again, back to this selfless love and this charity. One must love God with all our soul and with all our heart, as we are called as we are to love our neighbors with all our soul and with all our heart and all our strength. Let no one who loves himself think of himself now begins to possess, the, uh, uh, now begins to possess charity until he first examines the motives of his love. It's not really charity if I'm getting something out of it, if I'm giving to you uh, to, that benefits me. That's not really selfless love or charity, is it? We have to give without receiving. As, as I've said uh, you know, many a times to uh, several people, us Orthodox, we kind of give our back to be stabbed, and then we look to ask for forgiveness. And it's this selfless love and charity that we have for each other that, yeah, it hurts, when we get hurt and uh, when we get attacked for providing charity or showing self uh, selfless love but we look for forgiveness to heal that hurt you know as Christ says himself love um, uh, love thy enemies and do good to them that hate us and according to st. Luke 627 he who does this then secure uh, loves uh, securely for who for God's love's uh, sake, loves him by whom he knows not who he loves. And especially in this time, we need to have this charity and this self-love. We need to have Christ-like charity, not just do donating to a charity and being, okay, I've done my good deed for the day, I'm good now. I've come to church uh, on Sunday, I've done my good deed for now, I'm good now. You know, as I've said many times in this uh, pandemic, in this absence uh, of services and, and, and the way the services are now, you know, I use the example that here's the church, all secure, and here's our lives, doing this. We are now asked, because that was taken away for the moment, to do this for each other is to bring church not just Sunday our anchor as I've explained in previous sermons um, is make our anchor at home and then our anchor now comes with us everywhere because our altar at home as we see in the lives of the saints their altar went with them everywhere 
seeing St. Herman, who didn't have communion for many, 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 many years. And same with St. Mary, St. St. Seraphim, when he was kneeling on the, uh, on the rock. But they were able to create the anchor. And it's this self-love that they had, selfless love that they had. And this charity that they started to perform for each other. And it's the Christ-like charity, you know, I'm taking from one of the virtues, one of our garments, you know, on our garment, which is our, is typically our baptismal uh, garment. Um, we have many virtues and sometimes they're very heavy because we add layers on layers on layers. But then we start to get strengthened within Christ and those layers now become one. You know, we, we nurture, you know, in, in the fall or in the winter or early spring, we nurture uh, plants in our house. We plant them to transplant them to our gardens. And much the same as this charity starts at home, you know, um, and being able to have that we nurture at home so we can start to bring it out to the world. And as difficult as it is, especially in this time, it is difficult to show charity. But we need to have charity for each other. Uh, we need to be able to uh, connect with each other. Because we're not always together anymore. We're together in a very sort of social distancey sort of way. You know, the people who are unable to come, we need to outreach to them. The people that, you know, you know are having a hard time, we need to outreach to them. I know it's very easy to fall into um, the woe is me at this time, and it is, because it is hard. It's hard to, you know, to come to church at times because of the absence of people who we see. It's hard to come to church because we have rules and regulations now that we didn't have before. But we push ourselves, don't we, and come to church to build on that altar at home, we need to have church too. And yes, church wasn't there for a couple of months, but was it? It was always there. So it's taking the craziness here, securing it, and it's this act of charity that we use for each other, so, uh, this selfless love um, that I'm taking away from this gospel today. I wrote a whole bunch of other stuff, but I didn't get to it. So anyway, um, so as we move forward, let's outreach. Let's show this charity to each other. Let's look for forgiveness. Let's ground ourselves with our altar at home as we have the altar at church. So the world will now become secure. And this is done within the strength of Christ. You know, many are called, but few are chosen. We are all called. But we need to work to be chosen. And it's within this work, this love of Christ, that we will be chosen. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. Christ is in our midst.